Hi, my name is Christina. Welcome to the MD Talk Show. Today we're joined with our first guest, Joe <laughs> and Deborah. How are you? Hello, very well, thank you. Joe is a, an author and inspirational speaker. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And Deborah is a business mentor and writer. So, how are you? I'm well, good, thank you very much. It's very, I'm very happy to be here. Did you find your way here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like coming to London. I live right in the sticks, so it's always a treat for me okay. to come down to London for a little while. That's good, you didn't get lost. I'm always pleased to go home as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, Deborah? Did you find I your way? I live in London. It was very easy. I just dropped my kids oh, at school at nine o'clock, and then I came straight here. So, oh, yeah. nice. So, um, I'll start with you, Gail. Do you want to introduce yourself to the. Yeah, so yes, I'm, I'm Dr. Jill Barham and I am a women's health and empowerment coach. So my, um, my real passion is to help women uh, navigate through their midlife years, basically. So uh, all around doing things about uh, menopause, finding your passion and purpose as you're moving into your wisdom years, actually, okay. is what I like to say. Very nice. And Deborah, you want to introduce yourself as yes, well? Yes, absolutely. So my name is Deborah. I am a business mentor and I specialize in helping women to find a real voice, show up for their business with their real power and um, yeah, so speak their truth and write their truth because also I'm the founder of a writing academy for entrepreneurs where I teach entrepreneurs how to really unleash their writing genius. Okay, brilliant. So we'll start with you, Jail. You are a presenter, right? A presenter, speaker, author. Can you tell us all about it? Yeah, so I've um, really, all, all of my work that I do is about promoting natural health. Mm -hmm. So I come from a nursing background. Um, and nowadays, my business is really about promoting uh, prevention rather than mm -hmm. cure. So it's about building health rather than treating symptoms. Nice. So all of my work, whether I'm, I do a podcast called The Life You Deserve, mm -hmm. um, I used to have a show called The Vitality Hour, any nice. books that I write, any blogs that I have mm -hmm. on my retreats are all aimed at um, helping women to navigate through their, what is a, a natural time in their life, mm -hmm. but without drugs, without interventions, um, because we, we don't treat them the, the puberty, so why should we treat the menopause? Mm -hmm. um, so it's about bringing those women together, um, making meaningful connections, looking at um, women who are perhaps a little bit worried about what's going to happen to them mm -hmm. when they reach that sort that of midlife stage, mm -hmm. yes, and thinking, I, I still want to be youthful, I still want to have purpose, mm -hmm. because, you know, we're all living a lot older now. True. Mm -hmm. um, and so by the time you get to 50, you've probably got another 30 or 40 years to, to live, and we want to live that without chronic disease, mm -hmm. we want to live it with... Without fear as well. Yeah, a fear. there's a lot of fear mm -hmm. around getting mm -hmm. older and, and feeling invisible and that mm -hmm. you're not useful anymore. Um, and that's actually not the case. So okay. it's all about women power. That's mm -hmm. what we want. So what actually inspire you in doing this? I think um, partly was my own kind of, I had a health crisis in 2012 okay. um, when I was 51. And uh, it reminded me, it was a bit of a stark reminder because my, I lost my mum when she was just 56. Oh, um, and so I knew that if I didn't kind of take responsibility for my own mm -hmm. health and look at the stresses that were causing my mm -hmm. physical and, and emotional uh, well-being, that I would be likely to, mm -hmm. to go in the same way. So having the fear. Yeah. I don't want to live in that fear. I don't want to live like so that. So what are you going to do? Yeah. So that's how you look for the... Yes. And I was pregnant at the time with my eldest daughter and so my mother never met my children oh and um so i'm determined that i am going to be around for my grandchildren i have to say i've outlived my mother so we're we're fine we're we're doing okay oh, <laughs> at the moment. but i think you know it's it's that was where it came from mm -hmm. and then as my work has gone on i meet so many women who don't understand this period in their life they don't understand that uh, the menopause is not just about hot flushes and mm -hmm. night sweats there's uh, so many emotional and other physical issues mm -hmm. and confidence issues that go around with it. Um, and so, you know, even though I think I know a lot about it, it's become clear that it's still a bit of an elephant in the room mm -hmm. uh, and it's not talked about enough. And it's sure. certainly, certainly it's not, not talked yeah. about in, in, um, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so women, uh, a lot of women are feeling that, you know, they, they still want to be valued mm -hmm. in the workplace, not overlooked, and that sometimes 
if they're losing a bit of clarity of mind, if they're being forgetful, which is all part mm -hmm. and parcel of the menopause, is that that's got to be seen as something that's acceptable rather mm -hmm. than something that's indicating that they are no longer uh, functioning well. So what age exactly does the menopause start? Well, it can be as early as 37. Wow, that's young. It is really young. Very young, yes. and, and I think a lot of, uh, a lot of women are really don't know that by the time they're in their late 30s, their chances of fertility might already so be going do you, down. So how would a woman know is in a menopause? Is um, it? it's, it's about the symptoms, really. So it could you feel be a, different, you feel? Yeah, you feel different. There could be a change in your monthly cycle. It could be that you, um, your skin might be different, your hair might be different. You might be feeling um, less confident. There are all sorts of ways. It just may be changes in terms of um, whether or not you're getting um, uh, migraines or headaches before. Mm -hmm. There's a myriad of things. But there's also things like anxiety and panic attacks. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a it's lot very of common depression. as well. Yeah. And so sometimes women go to the doctors and they are misdiagnosed as having depression, for example, and mm -hmm. given, given an antidepressant, when actually what's happening is a very natural phase in their life, mm -hmm. which is this gradual um, move towards the menopause, the perimenopausal period. Okay. Um, and so making women aware of it means that you're less fearful of it, in my, in my experience. And you're not oh. alone as well. And you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as an author, tell us about your books, the books you've written so far. And okay. Also, what will people get in reading <laughs> yeah. this book? So this was my first book. Um, uh, it's called The Heart of a Woman, How to Look After the Heart You Give to the World. Mm -hmm. And this was a kind of big... Um, I, I, almost a big brain dump, really, of everything, because I'm, as an ex-nurse, I'm really interested in the etiology of disease um, and how to prevent illness and how the body works mechanically, if you like. Um, but a lot of that in there is about using food as medicine. So particularly the first three chapters are about how we can prevent and reverse disease by eating well, by creating better habits mm -hmm. around not only our food, but the, the exercise and the appropriate exercise. Because, mm -hmm. for example, the exercise that you should be doing and what you should be doing is very different to the exercise that I should be doing in my, <coughs> in my late 50s. So I okay. talk about things like that and try and just dispel the myths, really, about what, um, what is true and what's not. Because there's so much information out there, isn't there? You know, if you type so in confused. supplements into Google, you get one million results. Mm -hmm. So how do you know if you should be taking them and what you should be taking them for and when and where to get them from? Mm. So I wanted to be able, in that book, to kind of put my experience down through mm -hmm. the, the, the few years that I've been working um, and helping other women so that I could kind of try and unravel it a little bit. Oh, nice. Like. So where can people get the book from? So it's on Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. If you just look at Jill Barham on Amazon, yeah, yeah you'll see the cover. One, yeah. Okay, so as a speaker, tell us the, the key um, point you talk about a woman. Well, one of my favourite talks, I, I do two favourite talks. One <coughs> of them is called Balance and Flow. So as my own um, well-being has improved, mm -hmm. what I've realised is that it's not only about the physical and emotional, it's also to do with your looking after your soul or your spirit or whatever you want to do, do with it. So it's a, a mind, body, soul approach. And I know Deborah, who's, who's into the healing uh, space, she would appreciate this, is it's not only the physical stuff, it's actually having everything together. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I love to do. But uh, I think my favourite talk is about the superwoman. The um, superwoman. Yeah, <laughs> being a, trying to be a superwoman in the 21st century. Um, and unravelling why we are in the state that we're in mm -hmm. um, and that we have so much chronic disease, you know, the rates of Alzheimer's and cancer and mm -hmm. uh, heart disease is still rising. Yeah, true. Despite the fact that we know that there is such a lot of clever science going mm -hmm. on and research and development. Mm -hmm. And it's unravelling what is the actual cause of oh, this. Even living healthy and eating healthy, you still yeah. end up with this. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there must be something else going on. Mm -hmm. So that talk is really unravelling all of the elements that might be actually causing you stress in your body. Because stress doesn't only come in, oh, I'm moving house, so mm -hmm. therefore I'm stressed. You know, we all are stressed every day because of our atmosphere True. and the mm -hmm. people that we are around. Mm -hmm and uh, whether we're not getting enough sleep, whether we're exercising, if we're exercising incorrectly. It's, 
you know, it's not difficult. The bills and everything. Yeah, it's, it's the whole package. Relationship, divorce yeah. Yeah. and kids. Yeah, exactly. we have stress. And, and especially for the midlife woman, because nowadays we're in an exceptional time in that we've probably got young children, mm -hmm. some of us. You know, I, work, I can work with a 45-year-old woman who has children in their 20s or a 45-year-old woman who has a 4-year-old. Mm -hmm. But both of those may well also be dealing with elderly relatives. So this sort of sandwich um, okay. era. Mm -hmm. And so the stress is coming from being a midlife woman and dealing with everything else that you've got to deal with physically as well. Mm. Sometimes oh. uh, it, it's easy for women to go into overwhelm. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Jill, we're gonna, we'll, come <laughs> back. This is difficult. we'll come back to you <laughs> shortly. Uh, we'll go for a quick break and then when we come back, we'll be interviewing Deborah. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Welcome back from the break. We're joined with Deborah. So Deborah, your business mentor and the CEO of Deborah. Lucy, yes. Lucy, business mm -hmm. mentor, right? Yes. So tell us about it. Right. So I work mainly with women. Um, I empower them to speak their voice and write their voice. There is a lot of women entrepreneurs out there that they start their business and then their fear to go out there, to speak their truth, not to offend people, um, to really show their real personality. Um, so I really help them to dare more, mm -hmm. to be out there more, and um, to write really from their heart. Because I believe one of the first things that really sell is when we are really ourselves. There's a lot of people that go out there and fake, you know, I'm mm -hmm. this type of person, True. you know, they put a personality. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did actually when I started my business. Because I left corporate for, I was in corporate for quite a while. And when I started my business, I wanted to be this kind of mm -hmm. very formal woman. And I wasn't speaking my truth. I wasn't speaking really my voice. You, I know you notice you're putting pressure. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And I wasn't attracting the right people. Mm -hmm. Until I really owned what I am, uh, my craziness, my sparkles and everything. And I started to really speak my truth and, and show up as Brilliant. I was. And uh, so, yes, I, I help women through this journey, really, mm -hmm. to find their own voice in their business okay. using strategies and intuition as well. Okay, so who are your clients? So my clients are mainly women, um, mm -hmm. female entrepreneurs, and I worked with um, coaches, healers, I worked with florists, um, I worked with creative people um, that have a business, self-employed, so they're kind of small, small businesses, mm -hmm. and they do... Um, business online uh, mainly, yeah, so through social media. Okay, so tell us the lessons you've learned so far in business and how did you overcome it? Right, so definitely um, the first lesson is mm -hmm. to do it now because tomorrow is too late. I'm a person um, that I listen to the whisper a lot, which mm -hmm. is my intuition. And when my intuition tells me something, I just do it. I action it in the moment. Because if you just say for a moment, mm -hmm. I'll do it later, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it when I lose You forget weight, about it. You're just not going to do it. So I'm absolutely a doer. I mm -hmm. go-getter. I, I got quite a masculine Brilliant. energy. <laughs> yes. So. so who are your role models <laughs> and mentors? My role models, uh, definitely, because I love writing, so is J.K. Rowling. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely love her, her story, her resilience really mm -hmm. of so many doors were closing for mm -hmm. her and she kept going because mm -hmm. she believed. She never gave up. Yeah, she really believed and mm -hmm. I went through many similar situations when I was just about to give up because entrepreneurial life is not easy. It's not easy, no, I agree. So absolutely and I was like, you know what, no, and I keep going and keep I kept pushing. going and so I, and also she's a writer and mm -hmm. I have a writing academy for entrepreneurs. Okay. So yes. Okay, so um, Tell us, where do you see yourself in the, in the years to come? Um, I have a big vision. I am a big dreamer. And you know this, the saying that I say, uh, dream, dream big? Mm -hmm. I dream 10 times big. <laughs> so I see myself uh, doing, taking uh, my conference, from, which I'm going to tell you about, mm -hmm. um, doing like being on stage doing stages all over the world, taking my academy, my writing academy all over the world. Oh, nice. Inspiring women all over the world and um, writing more books. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, can you give us any tip 
in business, tip for business, maybe um, viewers looking to start a business, but they haven't got the courage and something's holding them back. So what are the tips? Yes, there is one thing that a lot of my clients always ask me. And they say, Deborah, I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't figured it out. So I'm just going to wait to figure it out. And then I go out there. And I'm like, no, you have to do it. Like, there is not a moment in our life when we know everything. Mm -hmm. When we say, yep, yeah, this is the perfect product. I'm going to give it to the people. <laughs> you know, I started and, Mina, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And if you had told me three years down the line where I would be now, I said, really? Mm -hmm. Would I be there? Well, because you never give up. Yes, because you just start with one idea. You get that idea in your mind, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't make sense. And actually, the best idea, the one that doesn't make sense. The one that you think, oh my God, it's so crazy. Mm -hmm. People are going to think I'm mental. <laughs> go with that. Okay. Do not go with the one that everybody th you think you would like. Okay. And there is one say, the last, if I may, do not adapt to your audience. Okay. The right audience will find you and will follow you. So Brilliant. do not be That's like, true, yeah. absolutely, you know, it's like people think, oh, but they're not going to like me. Mm -hmm. Just be who you are. They will and come. And the right people, yeah. They will come. We're not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not just, yeah, like there's that famous says, like, you're not my cup of tea, mm -hmm. but I'm your double shot of whiskey. And I, and, I, <laughs> and I am a double shot of whiskey for a lot of my women. So there you go. And for my husband as well. It would have to be malt whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, brandy. Brandy for me because I don't like whiskey. So, yeah. so any, any plans, you know, any plans? Coming up any, of anything you're doing yes, this I'm actually, year, before the year comes to an end? Um, yes. Or I'm, early next year? I'm currently doing a writing challenge. And then next year, this is my big project that I'm doing. It's um, a women conference. Mm -hmm. It's in London. It's in um, Baker Street in a mm -hmm. beautiful house. It's uh, Rudolf Steiner House. Thank you. I'm putting together a stage for women to voice their truth, to voice their stories, their experiences, mm -hmm. because there is so many stages. People say there's not enough women on stages. And then the one they are on stages, they have very experienced, they have a lot of following, maybe they have money to invest in speaking. What happened to the women that are the everyday woman that has a story and just mm -hmm. want to inspire? So I'm putting together this conference. We have some of the women have never, ever, ever, ever spoken in front of five, more than five people. So, and then we have uh, some experience. Mm -hmm. We're going to dance. We're going to sing. Oh, brilliant. There's going to be performances. So everybody's when, invited. When in January? 31st of January. Okay. It's going to be an amazing uh, opportunity. And it's going to be very spiritual. Where, where are you having it in London? In uh, Rudolf Steiner House. Okay. So how can people um, get involved if they want to be part? So um, you can get your ticket on Eventbrite. So you go on Eventbrite and you search uh, Women Who Dare to Desire Conference. Uh, tickets are going up every month, so get yours as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to speak, uh, you are put into a draw and you can get a chance to speak for three minutes on stage. And it's a proper stage, like a theatre stage. So, okay, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Um, today we have a topic, and um, the topic is about um, what does midlife crisis look like in a woman? That'll be. So, <laughs> that, mm. I think we're both interested. You're not becoming yeah. all you plan to become. Waking up in the, you know, middle of the night, financial issues, divorce. You know, what can one do about this? Well, uh, unfortunately, I've heard a couple of things recently from, from actually close friends who have um, been in a situation where they thought they've been in a very happy marriage, for example, mm -hmm. for 20, 30 years, and all of a sudden have found themselves kind of, well, we, we, you're not, you know, I don't need you anymore. I have no use for you anymore. After 20 years? Yeah, 20 or 30 years, which is such a major shock, and, and mm -hmm. really literally a shock because they had no clue mm -hmm. that this was going to happen to them. So clearly, you know, as a, as a midlife woman, that in itself is mm -hmm. such a, a major thing to happen. And I'm not saying that, that happens to all midlife women. But it does mean that as a midlife woman, there's some wonderful things about it. We were talking about this earlier that, you know, I don't bother so much with um, putting my makeup on and mm -hmm. every time I go out of the door now and I have much more confidence and I care less and less what people mm -hmm. think of me. Um, but at the same time, for midlife women, there is also this this piece about mm -hmm. building resilience mm -hmm. 
um, and being resilient because uh, of what is to come, because mm -hmm. you never know what is to come. True. And that's a really good example mm -hmm. of that. Um, and actually harnessing all of the wonderful experience that you've had for the last 20 or 30 years uh, and being able to sit with that and say, how can I use this? How can I harness um, that resilience so that not only am I going to live a happier mm -hmm. life and call my own shots, but also I'm also going to set a good example and leave a legacy for those younger men mm -hmm. and women that mm -hmm. are behind me. Um, because I think, you know, my generation, I, my life is so different to my mother's. True. Yeah. You know, and I think that we, particularly those of us that are over 50, mm -hmm. we've made such massive impact in how young women and men mm -hmm. can now have more opportunity in their lives. Because back then, I don't think they actually... It was so different. Yeah. So different, mm -hmm. so different. But there is a caveat to that, because mm -hmm. with opportunity also comes overwhelm. Yeah. So the tendency is, what I see, is for young women and men, particularly young women, to try and have it all, all at once. So we live in this immediate society where, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to have the house with everything looking perfect, and I'm going to have the family, and I'm going to have the job, and I'm still going to have the, you know, my pastimes, and all my children are going to be doing these wonderful things as well. <gasps> There's no space. There's no space for anything. And what I see is that, you know, I started my business at 51. And so what I want to be able to show women is that there is time for everything. And that if you have your children, please mm -hmm. enjoy them because they're there for such a small amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that if you need to work, you know, that, you, that that's all wrong, but it's about prioritizing. Mm -hmm. And so if there is any way for you to spend more time with your, your children, kids, yeah. then try and do that because I guarantee you'll regret it if you don't. Because mm -hmm. you wouldn't have that personal relationship with them no. when you grow up, they forget you so yeah, they're not, You know, my, my kids are in their 20s and 30s and they're not interested in things but they're interested in memories. So when we're together as a family, they talk about, do you remember when we did this? Mm -hmm. And do you remember when we did that? And our children still want to spend holidays with us. And that says a lot mm -hmm. because our, sure. our love and um, closeness as a family mm -hmm. is what we've instilled. And th this is the, the memory you've created. The culture, mm -hmm. yeah, you're creating those memories. Mm -hmm. They don't remember the things that we bought them. The shoes and mm -hmm. the phone. No, they don't remember any of that. But what they do remember is are those special moments. Mm -hmm. And so for me, as a midlife woman, rather than thinking that your life is over, this is the time when we really need to step up and l give these younger people the support and the mm -hmm. help and the knowledge that we've got to say it's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to say, actually, do you know what? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't even really need to reach the glass ceiling because yeah. there are more important things in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for some women, they think it's just about, you know, it's having kids and being married, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So there, so there, is, a, there is a balance and nothing is right and nothing is wrong. Um, but actually, um, I think there will be people around you, and I didn't have that around mm -hmm. me, and I think perhaps this is why I'm so passionate about it, is that I didn't have that support and the mm -hmm. family. You know, we live away from our uh, communities now. I know you live near your family, but, you know, we were very isolated, and so there was nobody there to kind mm -hmm. of take some of the pressure and to give advice um, and to, to be that support and give another view. Um, because what we see on social media is that everything's got to be perfect all the yeah. time. Um, and and it's, actually, not, it's not actually that way. It's not that way at all, no. Okay, so Deborah, do you agree? Uh, what do you have to say? Completely, actually. There is something that she said, which mm -hmm. um, it was key for me because I am a mother of twins. I have three boys. And I was working in corporate for about 10 years. And mm -hmm. um, my, my husband was doing all the running and you know, going and pick up the children. And my children were really away, far away from me. They were not, um, you know, they didn't want me, they wanted more daddy. And then one of my twins had an accident, he nearly died. And that's when I decided, oh my God, 
you know, I need to do something. So mm -hmm. I left my job and I started my business. It's not all about the money. Yeah, and I was like, you know, so I was the mother at the school gate where I never went to pick up my children. And I said, I am going to be there for them. So now my business allowed me to be with them and mm. create those memories. The personal relationship, yeah. And there's one thing, Mina, that I would say, I would never, ever, ever change. Like, you know, when people think, oh, I'm 44, and I would go back and you're young. And mm -hmm. I would never go back to the Deborah that I was when she was 18. Because actually, being, you know, when we grow, we get so much wiser. We get all the experience. You know, mm -hmm. we learn so much. And I absolutely love the age that I am. And I think I'm, you know, for me, it's the beginning could be a crisis like oh my you realize what do i need to do with my life mm -hmm. but then actually moving forward there's so much that you you know is there for you mm -hmm. i'm really looking forward to actually you know getting older in a yeah. way and, <laughs> and carrying on doing what i'm doing because i absolutely love it um and i think, I think my 40s were that was the time when i thought i, I felt most confident mm -hmm. and not that, that when you find your purpose yeah, I think so. I, yeah, think I, don't, I mean, I, I'm still in that. I don't know what happened when I'm 50 and 60. But my kind of idol is Louise okay. Hay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so what um, about this? Um, did I have this woman that think that it's just about having, you know, kids, husbands, and at the end of the day, they feel they're missing something, personal fulfillment? Um, this, so, yeah. does that, you know, uh, part of... Mid, uh, midlife um, crisis as well? Yeah, definitely. And that's why I run my retreats, is because I invite those women to make those meaningful connections. Because when, when you're in a group um, and you do any work about self-awareness or mm -hmm. looking at your passion and your purpose or what you're going to do with the rest of your life, it's why women... Sally, when the kids have grown. When they're grown, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what now? Empty nest, mm -hmm. what, what about now? Some mm -hmm. women literally, their children leave home and, and they've never had a career. Mm -hmm. And so that's really difficult. Um, True. So what I do is I bring these women together because it's why we join book clubs and why we join weight loss groups. Mm -hmm. You know, when you bring people into a, into a community together and you do some of this deep work, actually you get more transformational change rather than if you just mm -hmm. do it on a one-to-one -one basis. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a relationship going on, mm -hmm. there's a, a recognition of, oh, I feel like that too. Um, and, and there's also a bit of accountability as well, mm. of course, that goes on with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely, lovely having you on the show. Just before we go quickly, 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 where can the viewers find you to follow up or to be part of your, you know, your Do you makeup? Want to go first? So uh, for me, you find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn with my name, Deborah Luzzi. And if you want to join me in the, on the conference and uh, unleash your desires, set your desires on fire, uh, come and meet me at, uh, in London, 31st of January, on the Women with Earth to Desire conference. I'll yeah. wait and for you, you there. Jill? So you can find me um, uh, through my website, drjillbarham.com. I'm obviously on Facebook and LinkedIn and, uh, and what, um, uh, Instagram? Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Instagram as well. Enriching Retreats is my Instagram account. So please follow me. Please get in touch. Um, I've got free stuff to give away if anybody would like. Particularly, we're talking about the menopause today. I have a free ebook to give away if that's of interest to you. Um, yeah, just take a look. I'd love to con connect with you. Okay, thank you. It's lovely, lovely having you guys. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, absolutely. And thank you pleasure. for coming. Big pleasure. So, this is all we have for you today. Until next time, bye for now. Mm -hmm.